And welcome everybody to the most recent episode, episode number one since last time was episode zero of Atrocity Press Live. I am your host, Max DeVille, and with me is my co-host, Johnny Reed. Hey! Over there. That Over there. <laughs> there. <laughs> so much for your uh, future job as an air traffic controller. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> I can do it. See, look. Yeah, you got noises now. You got the whole thing going. Yep, yeah, because the cream. The cream will rise to the top for oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> so is this the part of the show where we let everyone know that if you have children, make them go into the other room? Yeah, you should probably definitely not let your children watch this show. This show is uh, not safe for work. I mean, we're not going to be showing nudity or anything because, you know, we get terms of service out on things like Facebook and YouTube. But um, we will be talking uh, freely with the, the four-letter words because that's just how I speak. <laughs> that is true. That's how Johnny speaks too, so we're all working it all together. <clears throat> but um, I am Max Deville. I own Atrocity Press. We put out comic books that your mother warned you about when you were a child. When you were a child, the ones that you shouldn't be reading. Ones like Mary Machine Gun, which is a um, a Templar agent who is nice and sexily, scantily dressed, who runs around destroying monsters, to save humanity. And then we've got Neo Tokyo, which is a cyberpunk. Uh, futuristic. Yeah, it's futuristic, but I, mean, I, I don't know if I would call it an epic, but it's it's there. It's, it's, it's right on the precipice of being an epic because it's got the world is built. Now we just need to get to issue number two to start fleshing it all out. That'll be, that'll be, that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be super fun. I'm I'm excited about that. I mean, God, how many comics do we have? How many how many scripts do we have written now? Ten? Right now? <laughs> oh, we got a, uh Human Hunters are up to four or five. Mary up to four or five. Yep. Teenage, we've got what two or three? Yeah. So we've got plenty to go. We've got yeah, we've got plenty to keep Fernando and uh, um, Mateus. Mateus and Adam and Alex and all those guys busy for quite a while. Yeah. So, um, you want to talk about that and tell everybody to kind of about our art studio we have? We've, we've got a studio that has basically we've got three teams. Um, a lot of teams, there's a lot of crossover in the teams. Because, uh, mm -hmm. for example, like team number one for Mary Machine Gun, that's just for an animal. <laughs> that's his baby. <laughs> yeah. He draws it, he inks it, he colors it, he does it all. <clears throat> and then we have a second group. Uh, I guess it'd be the B team, Bravo, Bravo team. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> and that's uh, Mateus Duarte, who does the, 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 the pencils and the artwork. And then we got mm -hmm. Fran Cordero, who is Fran Cord, who is Fernando's brother. Um, he's a fantastic anchor. Um, he's gotten a lot. He's improved a lot over the last year. I'll say that for sure. Um, well, I'm loving the stuff he's doing now. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's really knocking it out of the park. Yeah. <laughs> Fernando's helped him out, helped him with the evolution of his, his craft. And they, they all help each other. It's, it's a very, it's a very, kind of like the music scene used to be where people help each other all the time. And so before it became like, Oh no, it's, this is mine. And this is mine. And this is mine <laughs> type of thing. They actually do help each other over there, which is, it's, and they're all part of the same studio. So they have a, a, a goal in mind that works out in, in favor of all of us. And then we have Charlie team, which is Adam and Alex and Fran and they are working on uh, Teenage Ninja Bimbos versus Zombies from Deep Space. 
Now say that all five times real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but that one's a little uh, not quite the, uh, the one we're here to talk about today. But what we are here to talk about today are some Ed Benes metal covers, which I have right here. Let's see here. What number is this? Let's not pull out one of ten. Let's pull out ten of ten. That's fine. Let's put myself on the big screen. Very. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Reflection. Now let's open it up. Open it up. Take it out. Yes. badass that is awesome <laughs> that is fucking sweet yeah i mean I'm, i've been a fan of ed ben i mean for years you know it's so great that you know we have a legend like that doing a cover of murray machine gun and a metal one at that i mean it's the first metal cover we've ever done that's right you didn't do one with the first issue did you no nope, we didn't we were that is awesome and here's the book itself turned out fantastic. I mean, it's a different printer, but everything turned out great. Colors are popping. Everything. Yeah. If you guys didn't grab one of these, you really missed out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there's, there are six of them left because there's only one in ten. As you see, it is, they're individually numbered, 10 of 10, and they're all individually numbered, so this one here, that is awesome. <clears throat> so there was originally going to be 50 but we didn't sell enough of them for it to be 50 so people got an even more exclusive book because we just based it on what was sold you know it's the best way to do it man god this cover is awesome like this is definitely going to cgc <laughs> oh yeah it is sweet yes yes and if you want to grab that cover, it will be up on the Atrocity Press website at atrocitypress.com. Not going to be up there anytime soon, but it'll be up there eh, probably in a month. By about the time we're launching Human Hunters. <laughs> yeah, right about the time we'll be launching Human Hunters. Yeah, because that's Human Hunters. Uh, uh, the goal for that is to launch it on October 31st, Halloween. And really? Uh, yeah. A comic about monsters on Halloween? <laughs> um, so I'll go ahead and take myself off the, the Jumbotron there. And since you are the writer for Human Hunters, so let's give me, give me the, the quick elevator pitch. What do we got? I know here? nothing about it. <laughs> isn't, isn't that like the Marvel Disney standpoint when you get in an interview? I know nothing about it until it comes out. I have, I have 12 NDAs that Max makes me sign. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, actually, Human Hunters is a concept that I've had forever. Um, Max is gracious enough, you know, to say, hey, I got this comic company. Would you like to come write for me? And I was like, absolutely. And um, we got to working together and... Um, Max is actually co-writing it as well. Um, but the actual concept is to take the monsters from the past. We're talking to the literature, the actual Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the Brahms accent. Um, I'm trying to portray that these are... Yeah. I want to drink your blood. Yes. And, and, you know, and I'm trying to change that up to be like, these are characters that if they're immortal, they've been around for hundreds of years. They probably speak several languages. You know, they've, they've been able to invest money. They've been able to actually be very secure with the culture. 
Um, instead of them actually being away from what's going on in the world, they've been a part of like creating it. Um, we have one character, Cleo, that's our computer hacker. She's been around for several hundred years. Um, as we find and get into her character, you know, we're going to find that she, it's not that she's just a hacker. She helped originally develop the web. She, you know, she, she did a lot of the initial groundwork. Um, the main character that you find, one of the main characters you find out off the bat is, um, without telling too much, is um, I wanted to do a new take on The Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein. And um, I don't know, did you want to show any of those panels? Um, I don't know if I have any pages available. I don't mind come on my computer. Let me look. Gotcha. Well, basically the idea of, um, for those of you who read the classic Mary Shelley, um, Frankenstein monster asks Frankenstein to make him a mate. He wants a mate. He doesn't want to be by himself. Frankenstein gets all the parts together, starts crafting, you know, the bride of Frankenstein. Um, but then he has a conscience that just starts making him think, I can't do this. I can't bring another creature like this into the world. So in the Mary Shelley Frankenstein, he casts all the equipment and the body and everything into the ocean. And that's where the story ends for the bride in the books. Um, I wanted to take off from that moment. And that is where the bride, the lightning hits the ocean. She comes to life. And that's kind of like her origin. You know, this is where she comes. Jump to the future. You know, we have what we call our human hunters. And, you know, they're... Um, they're kind of the creatures of old, um, but they're modern day. And what they're doing is they're looking for kind of the worst of humanity. They are looking for drug lords, human trafficking, um, anybody, you know, murderers. That is who they're seeking out. They're kind of a kind of a freelance black ops team. You know, you have a thief, you have a pardon. Like the A-team. Kind of like the A-team in a sense, yeah. Um, where they're kind of a freelance group, you know, they, it's like they've been all these years, they've been called monsters and now they're the ones with the conscience and they're trying to clean up the world that they live in. What do you think, Max? You got anything input to, to that? No, I'm just, um, I got these pictures here and for some reason it keeps <clears throat> flipping them to like, it looks like a negative. That's reason. odd. Yeah, so I'm going to pull it into just. I'm going to pull it into Photoshop. But I mean, we don't want to give too much away. I mean, that this is going to be launching, you know, on Halloween. Okay. Um, when we're going to do our first five pages is what we're going to have. First five pages. Yep. Are we going to show those tonight, or what? Yeah, in just a second. Um, awesome. Yeah, put in right now it's got to get photoshop. and this is one of those to just to let you know those listeners know this it, this is something to get on the groundwork because we like we were talking about we've already got four or five scripts done complete put to bed and we have i don't know i probably got about 12 to 15 different ideas for future story arcs for it so correct me if i'm wrong i don't think this title is going anywhere anytime soon no, it's not going to be going anywhere. All right, so. God, I love that artwork. Can't really zoom in very much on it, but this is the boat uh, with Frankenstein pushing all the stuff, getting ready to throw it all overboard. And then we move to page two. And I just got to give a shout out to our artists because I really love the coloring. I love the layers. I mean, you have the texture with the ocean there. That's just awesome. Everything. I mean, the whole the, the whole art team is just all over it. I mean, oh, they're they're wonderful. They had what I had in my head is pretty much what they've got right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and when we were, when I sat there and we were scripting it, you know, this is this is what I had in my head, and it was like, wow, they're hitting it right on the nail. Yep. And then we'll go to page three, which is the body of the. The female creature in the ocean. The lightning strikes the ocean, which is what see the 
flicks her to life, makes her hand come out, and she gets all all static electricity fied. Now she's good to go. And she comes walking out of the water into the to the beach where she is uh disheveled let's say <laughs> well she's a newborn she's 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 coming right out yep. this is her first time in the earth in the world and then it goes from there to nowadays where she's upside down and that's yeah. where you know going to modern day she, she's our thief modern day yep. and this is a hacker. cleo cleo our computer hacker yep Get a little taste of her character. Um, the first issue doesn't really go much into her backstory, but the future issues will. Oh, yeah. We'll have plenty to go into. So, All right. So let's go over each of the characters of the of the, of the thing that we can at least go over. So, you know what? Do you, do you got that cover? Can we share that? Oh, yeah. Let's share that cover. That way we can kind of show the characters the highlight. Let me get it. Bow. Bang. Go. Yeah, we're kind of take that from the top. Um, Start up here with the guy with the long brown hair. Yeah. Um, are we going to give out all the backstory or just part of them here? <laughs> just, just the name. His name is Radu. Yep, that is Radu. Um, he's kind of basically he's the head of the group. He he's the mastermind. He's the one that's actually. I mean, I will tell you the one thing is these characters are immortal, um, in different aspects. So that's what you'll you'll find. You know their origins little by little, but he's the one that has gathered this team together. Um, he's the the, the Agent Fury. <laughs> yes, he's the he's the Agent Fury, the Bruce Wayne, the <laughs> Tom Cruise of the group. <laughs> Bring them all together. Yes. And to his right, I guess to our right, his left, right, would be the girl in the pink dress. Yep, that and that would be uh, Cleo. That's our computer hacker. Yep. <clears throat> um, if the the gentleman next to her, if the scars hasn't given it away, is Frankenstein himself. Yeah. Um, Victor, it's not. It's it's the the creature. It's the creature. Yes. Um, the creature. Ooh. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he his name is Victor. Um, he's taken the name of Victor Frankenstein in homage to the man that he killed in the novels. Um, basically. He's walking a path of atonement. He's doing everything he can to right the wrongs that he caused himself. Um, the one thing that I'll give a little insight to right below him is the bride. Or, I sh you know, a lot of the, the people refer to her as um, really she's just a female monster from the classics. The thing that is different in this aspect is they are not together. Um, they have an aspect of brother and sister. They both had the same father. You know, Dr. Frankenstein created the both of them. Um, he looks at her as a very big brother. He needs to, you know, protect her type of ways. Yep. And that way, you know, it doesn't, you don't have any of the, the, weird, <laughs> the weird. Well, and I wanted to do something fresh. I wanted something different. Every single story of Frankenstein, it's with the, I, you know, and to me, it always didn't make sense. I'm like, you guys are both created, you know. Yep. You guys had the same father. It's, you guys really are more siblings than mates. So that's their aspect. Dead At least that's what. Dead center. Um, we've got we have Freya. Yeah, we have Freya. She is our Nord. She's Nordic. She is um, kind of enchantress, sorceress, a little bit of everything. Um, her story will little by little kind of seep out through the stories. Which way do we want to go next? We'll just keep going to the left there. Move on to uh, the the doctor. That is our doctor. Um, he is our master of voodoo of the voodoo arts. Um, 
I'm not going to give too much away. We got a lot of pl stuff planned with him in the future. Um, he's really cool. He's laid back. He loves his rum. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> and um, he does have roots from Jamaica. And um, he, he's just all about the voodoo. And then we got JC. The werewolf, the werewolf JC, who is not always a wolf. <laughs> no. Uh, and you'll find out. I mean, we only gave the first few issues, I mean, the first few pages, but JC is one of the main prominent characters in the first comic, um, in the first issue. Um, you'll find out that he is Native American. Um, we do have a character with Native American roots, and little by little, we're going to kind of evolve that storyline of the link between werewolves and the Native Americans. Why he's the way he is and the curse. Correct. It'll be... We've got a lot. There's so much story that's already written. <laughs> so much story that has to be written. written. <laughs> we have, a, but we have an outline for a lot of lore. There's, there's a lot of lore. Um, I've always been a, a deep researcher just naturally. So, I mean, I spent hours and days just researching the backstories of these characters and they've really kind of become a part of me just, you know, cause I like, we have so much of the outline and so much, just plan for these characters. I'm just really excited to, you know, for everyone else to share that. Yeah. And, I mean, and you got to have the deep lore because I've noticed when, when, if it's a role playing game or a comic series or anything, as long as there's a really good set of lore that people can attach themselves to and become part of, that's what really hooks them. I think that's yeah. one of the things that, that, that manga has over comics is they have... Oh, they got great lore. They got all sorts of cool lore. <laughs> well, and that's kind of the trend. I mean, my son and his friends and so many people that I'm friends with are kind of, you know, changing to where a lot more people are reading manga and anime. I mean, look at Demon Slayer. I mean, it's just that movie and the, and the show. It's become so popular. You can't walk... I mean, you go from a year ago, I saw one character at an anime show from Demon Slayer. And we went to Planet Comic Con this year, and I think I saw like 23. It just was ridiculous how much that's exploded. And a lot of it is that lore. It's that you want to know what happened in the past. You want to know where this is coming from. You drop a magical element. Um, and I think that's something, you know, just, you know, for us, it's kind of me and Max is why we've gotten along so well and why this is such a great collaboration on some of these is like uh, Mary Machine Gun. You know, you have so much lore with that, with the Templars and the history. And oh, I mean, yeah. and you did your own research and you did so much work on Mary with her and Charlotte and, you know, Ophelia and there's just so much. And I mean, and we're, you know, we're ahead on that as well, but there's so much stuff to come out and it's just like, Every week, you know, we're building more and more lore. You know, Max will be texting me. We'll call each other and we're like, hey, we're going to do this. and We're going to add this. And it's just awesome, you know, to really just breathe life into these characters in these worlds. And then, and then be able to hold them in your head. You know? Yeah, you got to give me about two more months for that, though. <laughs> I'm a little bit behind you. <laughs> You'll be able to hold it in your head. That'll be nice. I mean, dude, when you do... If uh, a tear will come to your eye, <laughs> I got to tell you, the first time that you sent me the first page, I mean, I I was like emotional wreck that evening. I was like, I mean, my entire life I've been wanting to do comics, and you know, I've I've owned a comic shop, you know, I've I've dealt with you know movies and that side of the entertainment business, but deep down, the passion has always been comics. I've been reading comics since I was like four years old, and it was like. And it's just crazy. And it's just like when and when me and Max start, you know, just to give you our backstory, you know, Max comes to me and says, hey, you know, I really want you to do this. And I was like, oh, wow, this is really going to be great. And then he's like, hey, let's work on some of these other titles, which, number one, I just felt so much respect that Max trusts me with this stuff and says, hey, we're going to work on this stuff together, which well, goes. Start, we sit down and start writing and, you know, you finish my sentences. And I finish your sentences. I think we do it okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that kind of goes back to like even the art team, you know, like you were talking about how they're so close in a family. And it's kind of that way with all of us now. It's like, 
you know, we finally got it. We're like, they're texting me, you know, and they're like, Hey, I got an, you know, Fernando sent me another day. He goes, I had a dream about one of your characters. This is what happened. Maybe you can use it for a story arc. And I'm like, it really kind of hit me in the chest a little bit. I'm like, somebody's dreaming about a character I created. I was like, <laughs> well, I, he sits there and draws them all day long. So he looks at them all day. So he's going to dream about them. So. Well, I know, but I mean that, you know, for me, that's a very, you know, that's, re, that's something I never thought would happen. Yeah. So, so, uh, so I'll, you know, number one, I'll thank you, Max, for bringing me into your crazy world. I, I'm loving it. It's awesome. Well, thank you. Welcome. Um, and then you're talking about Planet Comic Con, which yeah, is oh, are we gonna go there? <laughs> it's, it's one of the larger comic cons in, yes. Kansas, in, in the in the in the Midwest. So yeah, Chris it? Jackson. Now Chris Jackson put that on. We got to give him, you yeah. know, because I mean I've known Chris for years. Chris is just yeah. one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet. Totally. Um, but I, I just wanted to know since I didn't go down there. Oh, you didn't go down there this year, did you? No, I didn't. Um, so what was it like? Like, was it how many people were there? I mean, were people doing any of the social distancing stuff, or was it just oh. kind of? No, I, I'm going to tell you. Um, we were down there. Um, I volunteer for a charity, um, yep. and we had our booth down there. And um, I was really impressed. Number one, because I could say I was down there all three days, and there was the Friday seemed a little bit kind of there wasn't quite as many people to me than there had been like last year, but we are, you know, dealing with a pandemic. Um, yeah. Saturday and Sun Saturday seemed just as busy as usually as before. Uh, Sunday was about, I think just a little bit, you know, less than they were. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers. I'm just saying that's from my perception, but once again, we're in a pandemic, but I got to tell you those guys, Chris and his team, they were diligent about keeping everyone on task. Um, out of three days, I only saw three people that weren't wearing masks. Nice. Um, one of them and two of them were a couple and they wore them around their necks like, hey, we got them. We just are too good to wear them, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it just kind of that thing. I'm like, you got them around your neck, but you just aren't wearing them. OK. And, and um, there was one other one other person. I want to prove that I'm doing it not because I, I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, and whatever, they may have their reasons, but I'm like, you know, I, I fall to the point that it's a Kansas city mandate, follow the rules. You know, yeah. everybody has their opinions, you know, we're not going to get into that, but I'm like, uh, if I'm okay. going to get to me, it's just like any other con. If they have certain rules at that con, I'm going to follow. Them. You can't go into con without a shirt. I'm not going to go without a shirt. You know, it's kind of that type of situation. I totally forgot to pay attention to the chat. <laughs> Do we have a chat? Yeah, there's a chat. If you go up on the comments. Really? No, I was being a smart ass. So. <laughs> but there's some. Rebel Gaming said hail. Pop said hey. What is the name? What we got? Oh, we going down it? Yep. William Clinton said hi. Yep. Warren, Warren said hey. Everyone's saying hey to Warren, hey to Uncle Sam. Right. Warren thinks it's a cool concept for human hunters. I appreciate that. And then I don't know who that is. I don't know why it does that. <laughs> well, if you're coming in late, the name of the venture is This is Atrocity Press. That is the name of the comic book publishing. And we were talking first about Mary Machine Gun. That is Max's main baby, his title. That he so graciously enough lets me play in a sandbox every now and then. Got the metal covers for it. Yes. That. Hey, let's make that a big screen if we're going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. So shiny. <laughs> so shiny. To quote all the famous people from Firefly, it's shiny. <laughs> <laughs> shiny. And um, that is what we were talking about is called Human Hunters. Yep. Human Hunters is about the classic monsters that are hunting down bad, bad people. Instead of the bad people hunting down the monsters, the monsters have turned, they flipped the script, created the A-Team, 
and they're taking it to the bad guys. Yes, because they accepted the mission, and they're going to go take it. <laughs> and I think one thing to just to point out that I think is kind of fun is um, I know Max does it a lot in Mary, and I do the same thing with Human Hunters, and our artists are so great at you know capturing it is that these characters are really going to be world travelers. You know, you're going to see Mary, you know, in Italy. You're going to see them in France. You're going to see my characters, you know, in Barcelona. You know, they're, uh, they're going to be down in Mexico. So, you know, so it's, it's going to be fun. We're, you know, these are, these are characters that are really going to be international. Well, that's the cool thing about it is being able to do what I mean. Fiction is great. I mean, as soon as I started, like, really sitting down and writing Mary Machine Gun, I was like, I could do whatever I want. I can yeah. Write, as long as it makes logical sense, because to me, yes. everything makes logical sense. And if it makes logical sense, people will be like, man, you're a great writer. And it's like, no, I just I just made my characters not stupid. <laughs> well, and to me, I know you and I both, you know, we are big advocates of continuity. That's one thing, like, you know, we're working on our timelines, you know, even with this artwork, you know, if there's a certain thing that's done on one, this panel, we got to make sure it's the same on the others. You know, we're really big to making sure that the product that goes out is as best it possibly can be. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's not perfect, then I don't want to put it out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and don't get me wrong, you know, everybody grows, our artists grow, we'll be growing as writers, but but I mean, it's still, you know, we want it the best that can be put out. I mean, I look at this cover here, this cover A, and it looks, it looks damn solid. I don't, I don't see any issues with it. <laughs> as soon as they put the, I don't have the. the <laughs> no <mold>. pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the trade dress on it. They have. I think Fernando made the one with the trade dress on it earlier. Yeah, he did. But I don't have that one, so I have to find that sometime. And that way I can carry it around. But, but and, yeah, uh, um, and I guess um, what's next after Human Hunters? I know people are going to be asking about that. What's our next venture? Um, let's see. Do you got, have that slated yet? Yeah, we've got Human Hunters. And then as soon as Human Hunters... Right now, they've already started working on Teenage Ninja Bimbos versus Zombies from Deep Space. They're about three pages in on it now. Oh, you've shown me two. You're going to have to show me that other one. You're holding out on me. Well, it's, just, it's still just pencils. It's not it's Oh, not I know. fully anything yet, but it's it's getting there. It's, 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 uh, I'm excited for that one. That was a lot of fun. I got to tell you that when you originally called me, it was like, I got this idea. And he told me the name, and I was like, well, number one, you don't need to say anything else. I get the whole I, – I had it all right then. <laughs> and then I said, no, stop. you got to tell me what you got planned for this because this is, this is sounding crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The Teenage Ninja Bimbos versus Zombies from Deep Space, that's that's coming up. That And Mary Machine Gun 3, it should be right around the same time. They should be coming out right around the same time. I mean, we've got, as I was saying, we've got three teams now. Mm -hmm. So, we've got, it'll basically be almost once every three to four months. We'll have about a, once a quarter. Uh, yeah, a new book put out. But, like, yeah. we'll have it finished before it's ready to come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll have a, we'll, we'll have a book a quarter. But we'll actually have two books done for the quarter. It's just correct. We have, to, we have to make all the the calendars and the prints and all the things yeah. that people want with the kickstarters and things like that, and you know the the cardboard stand ups and different things like that. Because so I definitely want to do some stand ups with some of these characters. <laughs> oh yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Well, and I think that's one thing too, you know, for a lot of people to know when they're act with our Kickstarters, when those are coming out. And I just love your business plan with that is that Max always makes sure that everything is completely done with that issue. So it's not like that money is funding the comic. The comic's already made at that point. Yep. Yeah. You know, the artwork's done, the comic's done, you know, it's not like, Hey, if we get enough money, we might be able to finish those last 10 pages. No, it's done. <laughs> 
I, I don't like when people like that. That's when you start running into Kickstarters or Indiegogo's that that don't fulfill. Is when right. they're like, okay, we've got this idea for a comic. We need twenty thousand dollars to make it, and then those are the ones that usually don't fulfill. Something happens. Yeah. Someone off with some money. Something was more expensive than they thought. Someone's something, in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> something, something always happens. You're right. And that's why when I was doing it, I was like, look, I want if the, the, the only thing that can be left before we start a Kickstarter is the lettering. Because I know SK can go through the lettering like a madman and just bang it out quick as hell and have it look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you looked at you've read the second issue now, haven't you? Yeah. So you've seen his lettering. Oh yeah, it's awesome. So he's all over it. What I'm supposed to read these two? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then I, I and then coming in, and that's the thing I know. The goal, you know, is to put out a comic a quarter um, next year. I know Max are planning on trying to up that up a little bit, if possible, by the end of twenty twenty two. One every three months would be nice. Yeah, because I know we also have a couple that are coming out from what is it, Love and Death. Yep, Love and Death. That'll be coming out very soon. And then um, we have Grim, because Fernando will be working on. He'll be working on Mary Machine Gun and Love and Mary Machine Gun Three and Love and Death at the same time. So, he's going to be a very busy individual. Yes, yes, he is. He's. I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I keep telling him, I'm like, dude, don't push yourself. <laughs> you know, I mean, don't. We don't want to burn out. Don't, don't burn yourself out. Don't. Don't start getting it to where you know you've got some self-imposed deadline and you start getting sloppy. You know, don't. Don't do any of that because there's no reason to. <laughs> you know, Granted. That's why we have a large studio. Exactly. And he's working. I, I know he can I know he can do what he says he can do. He's, oh, he's a wonderful artist. And he's just a wonderful guy. Yeah, he's a fantastic person. A yeah, general. if you guys actually want to know, um, check our first uh, actually installment of the Atrocity Press show. Um, Fernando actually was on there. Issue zero zero. He was on that show. You can check nice. that out on our YouTube channel, which doesn't really have its own name yet. So, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, so we could reach one hundred subscribers and mm -hmm. actually name our URL, that would be fantastic. We would like that very, very much. <laughs> that would be great. It'll get there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not sitting here saying that I want to be the next huge YouTuber. I, I, I'm not. I'm not a big giant YouTuber. I'm just a dude selling comic books. But I wanted to be able to go directly to the peoples with the comic stuff that we've got because I saw so many other people doing it, and that seems to be the way to interact directly with the audience. And that's that's what I want to do. I mean, I, outside of Twitter, because Twitter is just a toxic, toxic place. <laughs> well, and I, and I got to say, I mean, it's kind of the, the a lot of the industry, um, not just comic industry, but just, you know, the collectible industry. Um, kind of like Hasbro. You know, Hasbro has been kings of that lately. You know, they have their like Marvel Fridays or, Mar you know, Star Wars Thursdays. And they actually have the marketing team and the development team. And they're actually on YouTube and they're showing the new products as they're coming out. This is something, you know, five, ten years ago, you never knew what was coming out. You just had to wait till it showed up. Maybe, you know, got lucky enough it was in a Toy Fair magazine. Yeah. But these yeah. but but these are guys actually interreacting. That's bad. Usually you just had to wait for it to show up at the store and see what, 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 what yeah. the game. Yeah, and then from there they had Toy Fair, and then you could read it in Toy Fair and be like, oh, here's the new McFarlane Spawn figures, or here's the new DC figures. Um, but now, I mean, they've really upped the game where, you know, Ryan Tang, you know, and his team, you know, they're on Instagram. They're, they have the YouTube channel. You know, you can go out there and see this stuff, and they're interacting with people in the chat. So it's like really, you know, 
you're not just someone buying their product, you're interacting with them and they're, and they're, and they care. And that's kind of, you know, the pattern, you know, here too, you know, if you guys have questions, please drop them in the comments. We'd love to answer. Them. Yeah. You know, if you guys say, Hey, why aren't you doing this with your characters? Uh, Let I'm us know. The chat now. I, I learned my lesson to pay attention to the chat. <laughs> We will flog Max later for, for getting it at the beginning. <laughs> yep. I deserve it. I deserve it. Here, here, let me get the get the thing if required. Am I bo am I a boomer? Huh? Am I a boomer? Huh? Boom! How about that? Am I a boomer? Boom! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Yes. Um so really that's all we had to cover today. I wanted to get a little bit more into uh, Human Hunters and the fact that it's coming out October 31st is when we plan on launching it on Kickstarter. Yep. Um, I don't know if we haven't really discussed it yet. I was thinking since Kickstarter has these things where you can do like day one things, I was thinking maybe of having like a day one Halloween cover and only they could only get it on day one. I'd be down for that. I think that'd be cool. So we'll talk to Fernando about it tomorrow. That's a good idea. I'm down with that. See if we can get something going like that. That'd be pretty sweet. You know, I even have an idea for that cover. Well, there you go. Keep it. Shh. I'm not saying anything, but I got an. I'm just saying. You said Halloween and these characters. I got an idea. Yep. Yep. Just keep 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 it on the down low. So and that. And that'll be, that'll be sweet. I mean, I think that'll be a good idea to have one of those like that just for Halloween, and then have the regular Kickstarter afterwards. I mean, people could jump on that cover if they really want it. Yeah. Maybe we'll make it another. Maybe should it be another Virgin cover? Because we we've never done. We did a we did one Mary Virgin cover. That was a special cover. I think that would be perfect. Let's do a Halloween Virgin cover. That would be awesome. All right. Because that would go that would go really well with the thought I with, with the, the imagery I have kind of in my head. Then that's what we'll do. Then you guys if saw it come to fruition here. We're gonna do a Halloween Virgin cover for the uh, for day one of the Human Hunters Kickstarter. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and Close it out for the evening since it's uh, been about 45 minutes and this was really just a catch up from yesterday since we uh, had a little bit of issues. Everything's fine now, right, Johnny? Everything? Yeah, fine? everything's good. Yeah, that's good. See, got some family personal issues we had to deal with, but yeah. um, everything's good. Good, good. Thank Everyone you. that sent good prayers and thoughts and everything, I appreciate. All right, that's awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll go ahead and throw out this outro video and see you guys next Wednesday at 8 p.m.